Hello. This week we will look at sculpture and architecture. The main difference between the two is that architecture is built for more than just aesthetic purposes only. Architecture is to be lived on, driven on, and walked through. However, in ancient Egypt, sculpture had great value. Sculptors were trained in their craft mainly since most of their pieces were created for the pharaoh and other high court officials. Religious value was often attached to them for both the living and the dead. And quite often, sculptures were made of their god, goddesses, and animals that they believed helped them in their afterlife. The main idea behind classical Greek art is the heroic realism. Sculptures often attempted to reveal the human body in the same way that it appears to the human eye. For this reason, their sculptures often held action in their form. And this may have had to do with the athletic nature of the times. Roman art originally tended to idolize emperors and government officials. But as Christianity and the church began to rise in the area, painting and sculptures began to depict Mary and the crucifix and hell. Romanesque was a word coined in the 18th century, first to describe the architecture of Western Europe in the 9th through 12th centuries. During this time, the Gothic style began to bloom into the 12th century. Romanesque statues tended to be squat and chunky and angular. In contrast, Gothic sculptures were tall, thin, and sore with vertical lines. In the 17th century in Europe, a new artistic style was embraced. This time it was called the Baroque period. The church especially embraced this style, using the sculptures in their cathedrals and interiors. The mood was different than that of the Renaissance. Many of these sculptures had many angles in which to review them. You were meant to walk around them and look at all different sides. Bernini was one of the most famous sculptures from that time, and his sculptures, like many from that era, were meant to be viewed from the various angles. Take a look at the Ecstasy of St. Teresa on the left. As you can see, there is intricate detail, detail all around the statue. But most of his work was very controversial, though religious in nature. One of the most notable eras for art is the Renaissance. The name meant a rebirth, a time when there was a renewed interest in the arts. Donatello and Michelangelo were probably some of the most well-known sculptors from that period. If you look at the two Davids on the right, what do you see? Well, besides a fig leaf, notice the difference between the two sculpture styles. Donatello used bronze and was more classic at the time, whereas Michelangelo was made of marble, which made sculptures abandoned during the area. He was one of the few that still would use marble. Both are beautiful and yet very unique. Be sure to check out the links this week. There's a really neat explanation of how Michelangelo might have went about sculpting some of his marble statues. In the south of Sahara comes African tribal art, mostly known for its natural materials and carvings. A lot of the earlier work has crumpled due to termites, ants, and rotted by moisture, but some has survived from the 19th century. Most of it was carved for its practical purpose, whether a memory of an ancestor, or a mask for a chief, or a tool used in a house of a tribal member. Right here in America, we have some beautiful sculptures. One of the most appreciated for her beauty is the Statue of Liberty. A little trivia. Did you know that she was made of copper and was originally the color of a new penny? They had wanted to paint her originally, but the government officials decided against it. It took her 10 years to start to turn green and another 25 to turn the color she is now. Sculptures are beautiful art made from all sorts of mediums. The ones we commonly think of are marble, metal, wood, or stone. But what if I told you a sculpture can be made from almost any medium? Let's look at some of these. We have Legos and bottles. snow, and sand, paper, and cardboard, glass, and wire, cheese, and gum.
Clay and Plato. Nylons and cans. As you can see, there is no limit to what sculpture can be made from. But the ultimate sculpture, however, was made from dust. In Genesis 2, 7, it says, Then the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. God is the ultimate artist. As you look around nature, you can see the beauty of his hand, and he especially cared about his creation when he made us. Ephesians 2.10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in, him, in them. And then Psalms 139.14 says, I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I hope you've seen the beauty in many various forms of art seen this week and have learned to appreciate their value. This week as you drive around, take in the beauty of the architecture around you. I hope it's a great week. God bless.